Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sarah Torrey and I'm a PhD researcher at uh, the Re University of Brussels within the Mobility, Logistics and Automotive Technology Research Centre. And uh, I would like to talk to you about um, preparing, how to prepare for an uncertain future, so the spread approach to develop narrative and visual scenarios for cities. So this is a contextualization, and as a reminder, so Sprout aims to provide a city-led innovative policy response that will be capable of harnessing the impact of new mobility solutions in a way that makes them more attractive to the users and more sustainable for society as a whole. And within that context, there are five key objectives of the project, namely understand the transitions in urban mobility, foresee and identify the impact of the drivers of urban mobility transition, formulate a city-led innovative policy response, provide tools to enhance local policy making capacity, and navigate future policy on urban mobility. And so today we situate ourselves within uh, the second objective, namely foresee and identify the impact of the drivers of urban mobility transition. So basically what we are what we'll be talking about are scenarios and scenarios are an internally consistent view of what the future might turn out to be. Um, so this means that scenarios are uh, possible views of the future. Um, they are, don't say anything about likelihood, so it's not in terms of how likely something is, but they do say some they do uh, say something about possible futures. And so we scenarios develop multiple possible futures. So why scenarios? Because they help deal with uncertainty. They are, especially if they're in narrative or a visual form, easy to communicate. They show several possible futures, so several pathways, and they help consider long-term policy making while exploring short-term options. So we keep the long-term in mind, um, which helps us decide today what the short-term policy actions could be. So why scenarios? So scenarios help us prepare for alternative futures. They help explore alternative, but equally possible future developments. Um, they can create societal support for decisions through participation. So if they're developed with stakeholder scenarios um, can help create support because people were involved within the process and they know the futures that were explored. So it's important to involve stakeholders with local knowledge in the scenario development. In practice, they're used as an alternative to forecasts because forecasts are often found to be inaccurate over the long term. So scenarios are, really have a, a long term uh, outlook, so a very long term time horizon, like 20, 30, 40 years into the future, whereas forecasts um, have a shorter time span and um, it, like, for example, longer than five years into the future, they can be inaccurate because there are a lot of uncertainties um, in, within future developments. Um, and so in that terms, they're more and more used in policy making because they help deal with that uncertainty that kind of characterizes policy making and that has been a bit of a complicated issue with uh, forecasts where they found to be inaccurate. Um, so clearly they help deal with uncertainty by considering a wide array of factors and by developing a large uh, variety or large or a variety of possible alternative futures and now we can help prepare for the different futures that are shown by the scenarios. They also help build resilience in the face of uncertain developments because as we are considering these factors of uncertainty, we are considering these alternative futures, we can be more resilient, we can have action plans depending on how the future uh, unravels. So there are some difficulties uh, in constructing scenarios because scenarios can be either quantitative or qualitative. Uh, however, quantitative scenarios tend to reduce the problems down to numbers um, and they're very mathematically demanding, often accompanied with the estimations of probabilities. Qualitative scenarios, on the other hand, um, they're a verbal analysis and suitable for highly complex problems because usually qualitative scenarios uh, are developed by identifying two key uncertainties and by developing scenarios based on uh, extremes of those two key uncertainties. So it's a bit of a simplistic approach because you can omit a lot of the other factors um, that should be taken into account. So that's a bit of the problem to begin with. Um, so what we did within Sprout is that uh, we have this methodology that you can see on the slide. 
um, where we departed with an inventory of drivers. We then selected the drivers that were relevant for our cities. We evaluated the impact of the drivers, and then we developed the scenarios, both uh, as a narrative, and this was done through uh, workshops. Then we had a sustainability and a policy impact analysis. And finally, we had the final narrative scenarios uh, developed um, with, the, with our different cities. And we did this um, because we wanted narrative scenarios. We looked at a time horizon of 2030. So our question was, um, if we don't do anything today, what will urban mobility in the different pilot, pilot cities look like by 2030? And um, a key factor also is that, it, that we developed do nothing scenarios. So there were, there were scenarios that departed from the idea of what if we don't intervene today at all? What if we do nothing? Um, what could the futures look like? And so it was to identify policy gaps. And because of the difficulties encountered earlier with both quantitative and qualitative approaches, we um, decided to do a mixed method approach to kind of counter the difficulties with um, quantitative or qualitative methodologies. So we have um, we use something called cross impact balance analysis, and then we combine this with scenario workshops to also very much involve our stakeholders in the process. So to give you an idea of uh, how cross impact balance analysis works, so it is based on drivers fueling the transformation, um, and we looked at different driver categories. So we looked at political, economic, social, technological, environment, and environmental, and legal factors. And we assessed the direct impacts that drivers influence on one another. So here, for example, uh, this is a simplified version of, of a uh, cross-impact matrix. But we have tourism, urban structure, environmental consciousness, and electrification of mobility. And for each factor, we attributed what is called a variant state. So a possible evolution of the factor uh, at hand by the time horizon. So in our case, 2030. So we assume by 2030. 30, tourism can either decrease or increase. So basically then for every factor, um, for example, for environmental consciousness, if we say it's, there's going to be a strong growth in environmental consciousness by 2030, this will have a positive impact on increasing densification. Um, so our cities will be increasingly densified and a negative impact on increasing, increasing sprawl. So we will counter sprawl if there is a growth in environmental consciousness. Um, and so we do this for every factor at hand. And using this, we can then uh, come up with what we call internally consistent scenarios, the so scenarios without uh, internal contradictions in the storyline. Once we, so in combination with the cross impact balance analysis, we also organized scenario building workshops. We had two sets of workshops per um, pilot city. The first workshops were organized physically in January 2020. However, the second ones were organized online due to COVID because if this was in June, May, June 2020. So right in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. The goal of the second workshops uh, in June was to develop the narratives of the raw scenario. So basically the outcome of cross impact balance analysis, what you saw on the previous slide, is a set of raw scenarios. So just a combination of drivers that depicts the, the scenario, but it's not narrative. So the goal of these workshops was really to then develop the narratives of the scenarios based on the outcomes of cross-impact balance analysis. And we decided to use creative methods to really spark the imagination of stakeholders. And for example, on the slide, you see the result of one of the visual harvesters uh, work in Kalish. So visual harvesters were present for all workshops in all cities to visually capture the uh, results of the discussion with the stakeholders to kind of continue sparking their imagination. The result was that we had three scenarios per city, so 15 in total. We had narratives and then we also had visualizations for each city. This is an example uh, for the city of Padova. Uh, so this is a result of their first scenario, which is called Padova, the modular and sustainable city. And in this scenario, you see that automation and electrification is really an important factor because you have these autonomous pods driving around 
You also see that there's a strong political will for sustainable alternatives because infrastructure in um, like banking infrastructure or pedestrian infrastructure is really being developed. There are also regulations when it comes to delivery vans. So there's really an effort um, coming from the, the government, the local government to enhance or to make the city more livable. So this is one possible alternative view of Padova by 2030. Um, this is another one, completely pl equally plausible as well, which is called Padua, the Grim City. So in this view of Padova by 2030, there's no political will for sustainable mobility. There's no developments in automation and electrification. There's also um, no, um, no will to regulate delivery vans. So e-commerce is skyrocketing, but there's no regulations on parking for delivery vans. There's no, there's, there's no banking infrastructure. And in this scenario, there's also a um, economic crisis. So really important here is that both of these scenarios are very different, but they're equally plausible. So both could happen in Padova by 2030. So what have we learned really um, based on all of this uh, from the scenario building process is that it's very important when you start um, a scenario building exercise to define the scope of the scenario building. So what are we looking at? Is it the city? Uh, is it a sector? So really to clearly identify and define the scope of the scenario building. There's also a crucial choice of relevant drivers. So this goes back to the, the cross-impact balance analysis. The drivers will kind of define, they're the building blocks of your scenario. So really spend enough time uh, identifying them, selecting the ones that are relevant. Um, you can have multiple rounds with stakeholders through a Delphi. Like this is really crucial because this will determine what your scenarios will look like. Um, we've also seen that it can be difficult to step outside the business as usual of the current situation. So although we were developing explorative scenarios, so really exploring the alternative views of the future, so what the different cities could look like, um, it's very difficult, we found, for our stakeholders to step outside a kind of projection of ongoing trends. So there was a bit of a tendency to say, okay, well, today it's the Greens, for the Green Party, for example, that is um, governing the city. So we continue that note. And the exercise was really to say no, but like, what if something else happens? What if another party, what if? So that's a very crucial point of the scenario building. And I think this is where creative methods can really help is to step outside of business as usual because the business as usual scenario is useful, but you also would need uh, other scenarios to be really prepared and to help deal with that uncertainty. Um, and there's also a really crucial point of explaining what scenario thinking is, and this kind of goes back to the previous point of like scenario thinking explores alternative futures and explores different possibilities. So it's really important to highlight what scenario thinking actually entails to really have scenarios that are um, helpful and that deal with that uncertainty. And then the last point is that there's an importance of including a wide variety of participants, because depending on who you include in the scenario building process, your scenarios will also look a bit different. Also, local stakeholders from different parts have um, an important uh, not local knowledge, so it's important to really uh, yeah, involve them in the process. So. Um, our cities have had different experiences with it, and we collected some feedback from them. And um, yeah, this is what they said. What lessons have been learned in developing the scenarios? Thank you for the question. We experienced how the involvement of uh, all interested actors, such as decision makers, stakeholders, and users is, is fundamental to define effective uh, policies. The setup of scenario reveals the strengths and the weaknesses among alternatives. The use of innovative approaches and tools like these promotes 
the mutual interaction between professional and the representative with different needs. The procedure also promotes a multidisciplinary approach. What use do you see for the scenarios and for scenario building in general within policy making? This type of tools can, could be particularly useful to promote the introduction of highly innovative policies, such as in our case, next system, uh, within planning procedure and uh, documents and uh, where the participatory process is recommended. High potential for the adoption of these tools can be seen in projects where uh, the regulation defined uh, open discussion approach, such as uh, for relevant public works, since the regulation itself requires a participatory process approach. Go. What lessons have been learned in developing the scenarios? Here in Tel Aviv it was especially interesting for us to see how one driver can have a very big effect on various aspects of transportation and also how the impact can be totally different for different types of populations, like tourists, young people, or elderly. Uh, what use do you see for the scenarios and for scenario building in general within policy making? We think that scenarios are a very efficient way to think ahead and to view the effects of various drivers on the future development on the city. The scenarios provide an opportunity to look at various drivers in isolation from one another and assess their direct impact on the city. So to conclude, um, I would just like to say that scenario planning is a good tool for flexible planning to help deal with that uncertainty, to have these multiple views of the future at the ready. It's also a tool to involve your stakeholders, to have their points of view included in the planning process and to create more societal support for any decisions that might come out of it. And it's important to involve stakeholders with local knowledge, really, because that makes the scenarios relevant for the local context. And the last aspect, uh, in my opinion, is that the creative methods, if you're looking at um, creative scenarios or explorative scenarios or a bit outside the box scenarios, it's to really have more creative methods to spark imagination. So thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, our email addresses are on the slide. So thank you very much. <laughs>